Uh, well, well, look, I, I expected that everyone would be really nervous, so we spoke about uh, we just wanted to put all our energy into defence and that would help us run to begin the game. And, um, yeah, that, that worked well. So credit to the, to the players that came out and defended with a lot of energy to, to blow the nerves off and start the game in a positive way. 12 scorers. Always satisfying to get everyone on board and everyone on the score sheet. Yeah, that's good. I mean, look, the, <coughs> I, I think... Uh, and, and credit the Philippines. I mean, they battle away very, very hard without size, so it is difficult. And we had the opportunity to play them twice this year, so we are able to get a better game plan in place. Um, so it can't... I mean, I, I think the perception would be, look, we just beat up and bullied a small team. But we actually only won the game against Philippines by 18 at Asia Cup. And... Uh, you know, this game was over at half time on the back of our ability to run and play good defence. So it's a credit to the players how hard they've worked in the interim to get in a lot better shape between Asia Cup and now. So, yes, we were only 18 points better at Asia Cup and that was pro probably legit. Um, so it's it, it wasn't... Like, what that looked at doesn't actually identify all the work that the, the guys have put in. Nice to get a good win in front of uh, arm support. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I said, we really tried to work on our defence to try to get a transition game, and I think we did that pretty well. And also helps being in, in really good shape. Mm. Um, but it was nice. It was nice to be in front of friends and family. You know, you could kind of just, like, hear them or see them in the corner of your eye, which, we, like, I don't think any of us really have that opportunity to do. So it's, it's really nice. Oops. Guy, shooting percentages, uh, you were <coughs> productive inside, but um, speaking earlier in the week, you talked about um, needing to be productive sort of on the perimeter as well, particularly in sort of small boards for the team's career and other games as well. What did you make of that? Well, the, the percentage was lower than what we would prefer it to be, but look, it's, it's one of those things that um, you have to grade it on whether you are taking good open shots or whether you're taking forced threes. So we're trying to make our three-point shooting part of our identity as a team, uh, and that's throughout our roster because uh, our, our post players internationally are comparatively small, so we would like them to have a skill set where they can step outside and shoot the three or post up. And, uh, yeah, like, I, I think it's been something we've been working on for a couple of years that doesn't guarantee it's going to be magical every single game, but I do grade it on did we take good open shots. And so our problem is often more of, well, if a couple miss, then people go negative, and that's what we want to avoid. Like we've, we've got to learn to take and make big shots under pressure against, um, you know, particularly the two countries we play next, so that'll be a good test. Um... How, if any way, did, well, I mean, well, 50 plus points, the difference here, the result in the first game, did that change the approach for this game particularly, or how will that differ in your mind, how it changes the sort of the qualifying process this weekend? Well, I, I still believe we've got to win two games. That's what we're going to have to do. And, and um, you know, maybe we've got to win two games and margins will come into it. So you never know how tournaments pan out. So uh, that was a great win for Korea against China and unexpected. And, uh, um, you know, they, they, they played very, very well. So you've got to give them credit for that. So, um, you know, we, we know we need another result to go our way for us to be a, a chance. Um, that's what we'll work our way towards. So, um, yeah, we'll get ready and, and um, get a good plan together and come out and try and win the next one. So I, I don't, at, at the moment, there's no, there's no secret plan or strategy about it. It's just can we prepare well and play well the next game? If we get the result against China, great. If we don't, then we must get the result against Korea. We know that. Oh, well, as I... Look, you know, the... The margin looks like, um, you know, we, we bullied a smaller country. I think that's what the margin would look like to the people that haven't 
see much Tor Ferns basketball. So I, I hope that the fans were like, gee, you know, the guys really played hard and they really ran hard. And, and um, But there's been so much work behind to put that in place on, on every level with our program to make it go. Um, so you, you can't automatically turn up and, and do that. And I think that's what people will probably miss from it, that if they had a us play the Philippines in July and September, then it wasn't like that, you know. So the standards have really risen since that time. Um, I think the thing that impressed me the most was the way that our big men, well, women, uh, ran the court. So a lot of their points actually came from transition baskets, which, I don't know, like, how often do you get to be like, yeah, our big man is the first one down the court playing against smaller countries. So I think that that is the thing that we need to go into the next game with. Yeah, six more steals, a couple more assists. Co coach took her out though pretty early, so uh, she may have got a triple double without points. Huh? Yeah, so uh, no, it uh, it uh, decided that she probably had done enough for the night, earned a paycheck. And, um, <laughs> Big paycheck. Yep. <laughs> yeah, super big. Um, yeah, just final question for me, though. Sort of bigger fish to fry now. So that, that was cut to cut. Yeah, but look, I'm, I, I, I'm just excited about it, you know. So if you look at um, the basketball we played, and um, I love about our team, so we've got three real veteran guys that have been tall ferns, it seems, forever, and Michaela and Tony and, and Nat. Um, and it was only two, three years ago that, that they had to just perform near the top of their game to be competitive in things. And now, look, you know, players like Kalani and Panina and Stella, I mean, there's depth that's building in the group. And for these guys, it's a chance for... for you know, they're young, it's a chance for them to have it as their team for eight or nine years, you know, and turn into those players. So um, it, it's really exciting to me right now that we're becoming, uh, uh, you know, one of the majors in Asia, and that's what we're after. We don't want to be one of the minors or one of the middles. We want to be one of the major teams. And, and it's not easy day by day, and it's a constant challenge in standards, and it's a constant challenge to get your preparation right. And, um, you know, some days you kind of got to drag people kicking and screaming with you, and other days it kind of flows. But it, um, uh, again, our work there, I think, is indicative of the fact that we'll play the next two games with a lot of confidence and a lot of belief. Can I, can I just ask, um, <coughs> Scoring at the end there, rounding off a, a, a contributing performance. Everyone on the squad thought that. The, that basket in particular um, seemed like quite a nice moment from all on the bench and the players on the court. Can I ask why? Why such a reaction? I, guess, on the <laughs> I mean, I think they had bets going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, are you, are you, I guess, are you aware of that as a player of the court? Um, Ella may have been the only one not to have scored and, and I guess getting that rounded off nicely, or I, I just sort of wonder. Um, I mean, like, the people that are on the bench, we definitely are yelling it out, trying to get her the shots. But I think, like, just having everyone on the scoreboard, if people, like, don't watch the game but see that everyone's on the scoreboard, I think it just shows the depth that the team, like, has. Mm. And <clears throat> so I guess everyone was just super excited because... I don't know, we're all in the scoreboard. It's great. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, I, for that player, Ella's really emerging. I mean, she's kind of come out of nowhere in the last 12 months and, and uh, you know, she's impressive. She plays both ends really hard and um, she runs the floor. She works very well at her defence. She can knock down shots and, and um, 
she started a lot of games for us in July in some tournaments in Asia. So I think the guys are also just genuinely happy for her. Thanks, John. Thanks. Just a quick one, Guy. Uh, this is an Olympic qualifying tournament. Instead of Olympic dream being a uh, minute of discussions, uh, team talks as a preparation. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, it gets bandied around, but only from, I think, that... I'll go back to the standards thing again. So when we're kind of having days and it's a bit tough and some people aren't going great or some people are grumpy or whatever else, well, remember the tip of the top of the mountain here is the Olympics. So it's not like, it's not playing Wednesday night social basketball and what are we doing it for? So sometimes you've got to remind people that that's where we're trying to head. And so you've got to be one of the best in the world to get to there. Um, and... Uh, so that, that's the context that it's in, and then we'll go right back and, and where the, the girls have been great, and, and Kalani's uh, terrific emerging leadership is to get people, no matter how they feel, back onto the process that we need to do to, uh, again, to become a, a major team in the region. And if we can get that done, then we get a chance to go to the, the world level. Cheers, thank you. Thank you.